Ready if you are. Old Devrim, you already know. Welcome back, Guardian. Today's video, I'm going to try to put together as best as I can to just get you in the mindset of what Grandmaster is really going to be like and how Bungie is just kind of a genius when it comes to their options of Grandmaster and just barrier and anti-barrier, unstoppable and overload champion weapons that they have for you to choose from this DLC with sidearms and SMGs and me and you Teppers are already knowing that Ariana's Val is going to be a staple on a lot of early teams that are under light since it's the only weapon that you can stand back and take an anti-barrier shield off. If you watch the Vidoc, you can see where they put on every one of the Nightfalls where it was showing champions and then all. It showed that on Legend, it showed it on Master, and it showed it on Grandmaster, and it doesn't show that in the game at all currently if you were to go there, but I think that this is probably just some test screenshot footage they had from things they're doing behind the doors, and it makes sense that we're probably going to experience all three style of champions, and you can kind of foresee where these champions are going to be placed. Wherever Fallen would have been, that's probably where the overload is going to be, such as the arms dealer when you enter the ship and you see all those fallen porn out of the ship, you're probably gonna see overloads there. And the reason behind the footage that you're seeing right here is just to show you just how hard these ads hit when we're around 1,000 light versus 1030 ads. The average amount of shots you can take is five. And the limited number of revives you're gonna have is probably gonna be three and then plus one for each champion that you kill. So you're gonna have to choose a really wise loadout because if you're trying to gear up for Izanagi's Burden, then what that's going to do is it's going to choose you to use a weaker style of energy weapon such as an SMG, a hand cannon, or a sidearm. And I'll go ahead and just tell you now that you might as well just write sidearm off the list when it comes to console because their accuracy and their range and how close you have to get to target to be able to do damage is way too risky. Trackless Waste, any up D, and then Dire Promise or an explosive round hand cannon in general, any of those, the officer or service revolver will be a good one, things like that but sidearms in general just kind of suck. But in this footage that you're seeing, what happened was we started the master, we just did legendary, we're like, okay, let's start master now. And then we realized, okay, it's cool, we have these swords, but you run out of ammo so quick. One champion will take like half of your sword ammo. And if you have no more ammo, then you have to use an overload weapon to go with a sword. So what ended up happening was we had to go back to orbit. He put on a sidearm for overload. We realized sidearms suck. He was complaining about it pretty much the entire time because it doesn't hold them still. You, they keep recovering their health really fast compared to Legendary. And here's the thing, you have to match shield burns as well. So everybody has to have their own specific type of job. And when you're talking about being downed in five shots, you best believe I'm going to be rocking some kind of resist mod because it's going to be a game of chess in here. When you can only take five shots, but stacking two majors can give you six to seven shots. That's a huge amount of shots you can take compared to the amount it takes to kill you. You know what I mean? So making sure your build is on wise, making sure you have the right type of guard on your sword, such as enduring guard, which we're going to be talking about in this video versus like burst guard and things like that. But what ended up happening was we killed the first two overloads, then three more come out and then they're programmed to when one's about to die, another overload is programmed to step in front of that one. So if you can't keep constant damage going and you don't have ammo because you're going to waste a ton of ammo. It takes about three times the amount of shots just to down a red bar add than it normally does in like a legendary nightfall or whatever. And we're only at 30 light under in this test footage trying to just run data and just figure out, you know, what all we need to gear up for Exodus Crash, which we ended up figuring it out. And that build was in the last week video. But I just wanted to show you just what's in store for you, because if you think it's going to be another Izanagi, and divinity dlc you're going to be sadly mistaken when grandmaster launches because you have to get those shield matches because if you're 40 light under and you're shooting a red bar shield and got an arc shield weapon on it's not it's going to waste all of your ammo and not only that if your anti-barrier guy gets killed and you're out of revives and you have just overload and unstoppable equipped it's going you're back to orbit you know what i mean it's game over basically and this is exactly why I wish that I could do a two hour video because I'm afraid I'm not going to say the right thing or somebody's going to be like, well, somebody can just have this subclass on, somebody can have that subclass, somebody can have this type of energy. And that all sounds good and dandy. And keep in mind that we're only two manning this. So of course we will have a third that can cover some kind of shield burn. But what I'm getting at is, for example, the arms dealer. I'm not geared out for overload at the moment because at the moment there are no overload champions that's only going to be in the grandmaster version but in that grandmaster version there's arc shields there's a lot of void shields and there's also solar shields so my job is going to be 
void shield enemies and i'm also going to be gearing out for the overload champions as well as unstoppable champions as well by using the hammer of the war mine in case somebody does go down that was our main unstoppable guy i still have that fighting chance but with that being said i have no room on my build to handle any type of anti-barrier because as you saw earlier in the exodus crash footage it's important to have one person at least to have an overload weapon and i'm going to be using dire promise that has osmosis and also triple tap with the overload mod on it. The triple tap is going to be used because I can sit there and hold them steady and I can get up to 18 rounds out of it without having to rely on overflow which requires me to pick up heavy or special ammo to get that perk to proc. I like the triple tap because every time I stack crit shots up I'm getting rounds refunded to me so it's really important to have a lot of damage and a lot of rounds in general going out to overload champions to prevent them from recovering which happens extremely fast unlike what you're seeing in front of you right now this is just legendary gameplay the master and the grandmaster they'll keep getting their health back if you don't keep doing damage to them constantly and swords alone just aren't going to be enough and since i'm having to take care of void shielded enemies i'm going to be using telesto along with that which is going to take my exotic slot up so for this role, which is extremely important, I can't afford to use Izanagi or Divinity because I gotta cover the shield burns and I also gotta cover that specific champion as well as the unstoppable using Hammer of the Warmine. And then on top of that, I have the Osmosis to continuously cover any arc shielded enemies. In case I don't have any more sword ammo or super ready, I can just throw my grenade and immediately swap over to arc damaged. And since overloads are normally accompanied with arc shielded enemies because of the Fallen being an arc class, I have that option to completely cover the Fallen in general with that hand cannon. But perks like Osmosis and Triple Tap, normally guns I would have deleted in the past are actually really beast this DLC. And I'm also not saying you can't have any Izanagi or any Divinity player, but what I'm saying is just the example of the role that I'm playing, having to cover those shield matches, having to cover a specific type champion, as well as unstoppables in case I have to with the Hammer of the Warmind. And then with Utepper's role, he's using the area on his Val, and he's also using an unstoppable hand cannon, and he has disruptor grenades on his chest piece, so he's actually able to cover all three of them, but mainly the anti-barriers for his role. And for his heavy weapon, he'll be using Wendigo. So that leaves me with the Overload roll and the Void Shield roll because on his roll, he has no Void. So I'm going to be having to cover that. So how you synergize your builds with your other teammates is really what I'm getting at to cover all aspects of a Grandmaster Nightfall for whatever you might be facing. We're also both going to be using Arc Subclass to make the most Warmind Cells as possible, but we're going to be doing two separate style Warmind Cell perks on our armor that kind of bounce off each other. I'm mainly going to be talking about the role that I'm playing for the arms dealer and the overload role, but I'm going to start it off with my helmet and kind of bounce around. I'm using two boss resists, but one's going to be on my helmet. I'm using a fusion rifle ammo finder as well as tyrant surge. I probably put this armor build together about 10 times throughout the entire week playing with the arms dealer, and then finally I got it all jam packed with everything that I will possibly need without wasting anything and getting the most benefit on the team. And that's what we're going to be talking about is making sure that everything you're choosing isn't so much of a solo perk, but more of a team aspect as well. Well, to save energy on my arm piece so that I can use fastball to throw those grenades out even faster to proc those cells because of how fast the enemies move, I found fastball to be really beneficial. But here's the difference between two enhanced small arms loaders versus one. And you can see the difference really isn't much at all. And that's why I chose to not do two. I think that Utepper is going to use two because he's using Ariana's, but it does have the auto loading as well. But I only chose to do one because again, I thought fastball was just a really important perk and it's really easy to do art grenades with fastball versus other subclasses. I normally don't like fastball, but on the arc subclass, the trajectory isn't as bad or off filling like it is on other subclasses. And getting those grenades off fast, even throwing them down at your feet is quicker. And in those clutch moments, or if you're just trying to proc a warmind cell against a champion or, or whoever it is, basically, it's really beneficial to throw it even faster to get that going just a little bit quicker. I don't want to waste a lot of time just talking about fastball, kind of get onto the point with the video, but don't sleep on fastball. It's really clutch in Grandmaster activities when you have faster moving ads. Earlier I mentioned resist mods and I'm going to take some time out for this part of the video to kind of go over in depth exactly what these are going to be adding for you when it comes to Grandmaster. When I was saying earlier the average amount of hits you can take is going to be about 5 hits and with our bond we're going to be mixing in more mine protection and passive guard as well as special finisher because it's crucial to always have special ammo because you're going to run out quite a bit so having that for a team is really clutch. Now here it is with 2 major resists with no war mine protection it's an instant kill. However, if we do that same situation with the Warmind Protection and with the two major resist mods, of course this is just a legendary, but just an example, you'll see that it doesn't even bust my shield because the Warmind Protection gives you about 50% damage resistance. It's actually around 55%, a little bit more than passive guard. This is a hit on a master versus that champion, 
and you can see that the health is just barely there that'll kill me without two major resist mods so it's really important to have those to save those revives when it comes to the grandmaster when you have a limited number of those now here it is with the passive guard you can see it's like just to the left of that diamond below the recovery meter. Now with the same test, just the Warmind Protection alone, you'll see that it's a little bit more resistance than Passive Guard, but they don't have diminishing returns. You'll see right here with the Passive Guard and with the Warmind Protection, it actually doesn't even get me to half health. It can actually take two hits before busting my shield. The only reason it got busted here is because the fire hit me, but two hits with two major resist prevents my shield from getting busted. Here's Warmind Protection again, hit him with a grenade, have a grenade stuck to me, and I'm in the red stage, but those two major resists allow me to still survive it versus 1030 adds. And don't forget that the arms dealer had togetherness on, which you're going to find yourself low health all the time without getting recovery because of how delayed the recovery is. Now here's boss resist mods, it took six shots with two boss resist. I'll do the same test again, stand right in front of him, and you'll see actually that time it took seven, so six to seven shots with two boss resist. Now I'll walk up with none on, and you'll see he melts me instantly with five, and lots of situations are going to be happening in combat, and like I was saying earlier, the average amount of hits you can take being five, no matter if it's against red bar ads or champions, some champs one or two, you know what I mean? So there's situations where you might get chipped away with a red bar ad and then sniped by a major. You know, there's so many combinations of things like this that can happen. So by applying these mods on your armor build in a situation where you can get down immediately fast, getting one to two extra shots isn't that bad of a thing to have on your build. When you're in a crucial activity that only has so many shots and so many revives, every little thing matters on your build and trying to fit all that onto a build and balance it perfectly for all those situations you're going to be having. And then right here against this sniper, here's with zero mods on versus the boss. It's right above that little faint white line below the meter. And then there's situations where maybe you're shooting the boss and he shoots you. And then a red bar shoots you, you know what I mean? And no mods on really isn't that great of a thing. Now here's with one on. And you can see how much it actually adds to the health meter. It's a little tiny pinch. I actually decided to go with two because of situations just like this. I'm going to start shooting the boss. I know he's about to hit me. I hit him with the Warmind cell though because of my super, which is a clutch thing to have on a build. Having that Warmind protection is really beast. I'm going to pop my super. It's going to create that Warmind protection. I have half health right now, and he's about to snipe me right when I land. But luckily, because of the two boss resist synergizing with the Warmind protection, it allows you to survive situations like that where health recovery is turned off or extremely delayed, which happens all the time in togetherness, and that's the same reason that I put it on this build, so I can synergize boss resist with the Warmind. I originally had a ton of clips showing you how those all synergize together, but it started to get so lengthy that I had to cut a lot of it out, but I can't stress enough to you exactly how important that is to have those boss resist and major resist mods. It'll always change depending on what nightfall or ordeal that I'm going to be doing and stuff, but for this one specifically, two major, two boss resist, and then the passive guard and the warmind protection all stacked with that for the red bars or whatever, but the majors and the bosses are the ones that are the most threat, they hit the hardest, and then the other ones are the, you know, the minor chip health, but like I said, average of five hits. Resist mods in base game activity are not that beast, but when you're playing chest in the rules of Grandmaster, it's a must staple piece on any build in my opinion, and I promise you they'll pay off. Maybe not always, but there are going to be a lot of situations where that could have been a prevented death had you had those stacked on there. At the end of the video, I'm also going to have the screenshot that goes over everything again, so we'll recap it. But let's talk about swords now and why I recommend this specific sword, Relentless Strike, Whirlwind Blade, and Enduring Guard mixed with the most ammo or jagged edge or you know whatever one gives you the most ammo but not really so focused on that one as much as I am on the enduring guard versus other ones such as burst guard so we're going to start it off with enduring so if you didn't understand swords or know you know what the old charge meter is on it when you block that's pretty much what it is your charge rate is how fast it comes back you can block with enduring guard for seven seconds and it takes five seconds to get it back you can block whenever within that five seconds but to get it completely back it takes five seconds so it can be really clutch in Grandmaster when you're in situations and you have passive guard on mixed with enduring guard. Enduring guard in base game isn't really as good as like, you know, heavy guard or, you know, burst guard and things like that as far as how much damage resistance you get. But since you can block for seven seconds, which is an extremely long time for a block versus burst guard, and then you mix it with passive guard, it actually turns into a lot of damage resistance. Here's an example of burst guard. It goes away extremely quick in like two seconds, and then it takes that five seconds to recharge itself. So it's not that great. It's meant for burst damage basically, like snipers and things like that. But when you're getting chased around in combat, 
Burst Guard is not going to be as reliable as Enduring Guard. It just goes away too quick. I mean, it's great if you're getting sniped at and things like that, but the recharge rate versus the only two seconds you get to block with it, it's not going to help you that much. If you're trying to get a revive on somebody in Grandmaster and you can't block long enough, which is what I was showing you earlier when the Exodus crashed when Uteppers was blocking to revive me, it's good for situations like when you're getting stomped at or like this situation here where I'm getting sniped at. But it's just such a brief amount. It's just not really worth it. Even though it does give you a lot of guard resistance, especially with passive guard, I believe getting to hold down the block longer and take a tad more damage is better than only getting two seconds and getting a little bit more of an increased damage resistance, if that makes sense. I just like Enduring Guard. I think it's just more clutch when you combine it with the right perks, like War Mind Protection and Passive Guard. There's also other guards, such as Heavy Guard and you know things like that, but I wanted to focus on the quickest one with the most damage resistance versus the longest one with the medium damage resistance, so you can kind of just get the idea. As earlier I was saying, Telesto is going to be a clutch weapon for the role that I'm going to be playing. Not only for me, but the amount of orbs you can make with Telesto and the amount of void shields that's going to be in the arms dealer, it's a clutch weapon to have and a beast weapon to have on any arms dealer team because of the simple fact that there's going to be so many void shielded enemies and the ammo economy and the reserves you can have with the catalyst on Telesto keeps you filled with ammo more often versus if you were using another void fusion rifle such as Epicurean, you're going to run out of ammo and not keep as much ammo on an Epicurean or any other type of fusion versus the amount of ammo that you'll get with Telesto. I just am a firm believer that Telesto has an ammo finder built into the catalyst. I can't prove that at all, but it seems like I always have Telesto ammo, but when I switch to like a legendary fusion rifle, it seems like I'm out all the time. And then when you combine that with special finisher, which is going to be on this build, it really just helps not only myself, but the entire team to keep Ariana to keep out whatever, you know, special my other third is going to be having on, whether it be, you know, Divinity or Izanagi or whatever. You're not going to have a lot of ammo, and you're going to be using a lot of ammo at the same time in Grandmaster because of the damage and how hard these enemies hit and how much damage they take to kill. So having both of those combined is just a win-win for your team. And to top all that off, Uteppers is going to be using Wendigo, so me making the orbs to charge his Wendigo to then go and crush any kind of boss, mixed with the Warmind Protection, mixed with his also Rage and Wrath of the Warmind that he'll be having on his build that synergizes with the Suppression and with the Warmind Protection that I'm going to have on my build. It all just kind of works hand in hand, not even including whatever our third member is going to have that's going to help us beast even more. And for vehicles and things like that, the boss resist also help against that, but Telesto is a clutch weapon to have against any kind of vehicle. The cracklies in the range that you get, there's no fall off on those cracklies. And again, here's a situation with that Warmind protection against him, and then right at the end, we'll blow it up with the Rage of the Warmind that he'll be having. So we set those besides champions all the time. In the tank room with Telesto, you can funnel and bottleneck all those ads on that platform across. If you know the strategy where you first run in, you take a right, you hop on the platform, and it causes all the ads to just run up the ramp and hop on the platform across from you, and they just kind of just stand there. It's going to be a lot harder to do in Grand Master. It's actually really hard to do in Master, but it can still be done if you rush in quick enough. But the the fact that you get no damage fall off on those cracklies and it has a better utility versus any other fusion rifle or weapon that you can use you can spray it on the floor for traps for the dogs that run around enemies coming out of doorways there's just a lot of utility you can use with telesto now moving on to my leg piece hammer of the war mind at first i was really selfish and i was actually using power of rasputin to get that 10 percent damage but then i started thinking about the grandmaster again and then the limited revives and i don't want to be stuck where i can't handle anything but overloads so by having that it's pretty beast to have the cool thing about it is it staggers unstoppable champions the bad thing about it is it doesn't really stagger overload champions that well It'll let you do damage or bonus damage or whatever to Overload Champions doing the disruption, but it doesn't stop them from moving like it does on Unstoppables. I don't know if it's a bug or if that's just how it works, but it's kind of hit or miss on Overload Champions. But I still recommend it so you still have a chance, even if you're not an Overload weapon and you have Hammer of Warmind, you can still do damage to them, it's just extremely hard to take them down. But when you mix that in with your sword you're going to be having, you can just crush through all these dudes with the Whirlwind Blade to get that bonus damage, and the Relentless to keep refunding your ammo every three hits. You've probably noticed that I'm not using any exotic on this build. When it comes to my stats, I'm using 6 recovery because of togetherness being on. However, if togetherness is not going to be the modifier for the arms dealer that week, then I'll put a recovery mod on my arms and adjust that arm piece as is, probably removing fastball and that boss resist, and then doing 3 major resists on top of it, because 1 boss resist just isn't enough in my opinion. They usually have to be stacked in 2s or higher basically. But going over why I'm not using any exotics, here's the build itself. I need the suppression, I need the global, I need the protection, and I need everything above that you see on this build to successfully 
defeat the Grandmaster version if it does have all three style champions being the Overload being that third one during the Fallen sequence whenever they're all rushing into the ship. I have a feeling that's where the Overloads are going to be at. But here's Utepper's build and how it synergizes with mine. Him using Wrath and Rage of the Warmind and the other perks that you see on here. So if you want to screenshot both of these and build them together as a squad, and then your third person could probably run something like Divinity or Izanagi or whatever, but like I said, if you do Izanagi, you get that sidearm, that SMG, or that hand cannon for the energy slot at that point, and I'd probably rather go with Divinity for that extra bonus damage rather than Iza, but completely up to you but that's why I'm not using any exotics and I'm probably not going to be able to get that close to really get much use out of Felwinter's Helm if we do get it back before the Grandmaster which I'm sure that we will. I'm sure it's going to be probably back in the next week or two but hopefully this video helps you out Guardian. I know I didn't get to cover every topic as in depth as I would have liked to do it but even though I didn't go that in depth just take everything that you heard me say today and know that it's like you know it's really important information to learn me and Utepper spent probably 30 hours in the arms dealer studying it all week and that's definitely going to be an ultimate build to help you beat that grandmaster when it does come around so if you want to hit subscribe for more content I highly appreciate that or you can join our B squad to help support this channel so I can keep doing content and spending time making all these videos and guides for you bros guardians I really do appreciate you spending all your time watching this but next week, it could be the Brood Hold, or it could be, you know, Tree of Probabilities, whichever one. I'll be making another guide and another build, because I believe that every Grandmaster is going to need a brand new specific build that's tailored to what you're going to be encountering in that Grandmaster. So just because you see this one build, there's still going to be three to four more other ones that are going to be just as important to cover many roles that are going to be happening in Grandmaster. But hit subscribe, share this video with your friends, start putting these builds together and get that practice in. Launch those masters, drop your light level, and just get ready to, you know, see what you're going to be facing. And maybe by doing that, a lot of what I'm saying today might, you know, start making a lot more sense when you're actually in the experience of it and, you know, seeing how hard they hit and that average of five shots and how it all just kind of adds up. And when you got to pick and choose what really matters on a build is the most important thing. Like I was saying earlier, I built that build probably 10 times throughout the week. And the one that you just saw was the final version of that that covers really everything and is about the team and about yourself as well and keeping your own self alive. But anyways, I'm going to let you get out of here, Guardians. Thanks for all your support, for viewing, for staying to the end. My name is Rostophilus, and I'll see you in the next video next time. In space.